But the future is built on past experience, right? So how do we plan into the future where we're going with all of these technologies? And a lot of those are guided then by what has been successful in the past. So when we look at all of the successes in the past, I'll mention three particular things which uh, should be quite obvious. The first is intraoperative navigation, right? So Medtronic has been a leader in this field as you've seen since 1990s. And I don't have to be the one to tell you that navigation has changed the way we do spine surgery, right? For especially for minimally invasive surgeons, it's significantly reduced the amount of fluoroscopy that's being used. For complex spine surgeons, it's made uh, surgeries much safer. And there's so much literature over the past decades to show that intraoperative navigation has uh, lowered malposition, lowered reoperation rates, lowered complications. So when, when we take a look at the past, this is a technology that has demonstrated success. The next thing I'll comment on is robotic surgery, right? So the Mazor company has been building robots since 2004. Then right around the 20 teens, there was this breakthrough in the development of finally this modern robotic arm that many of us are familiar with, multi-jointed kinematic system with an optical camera that is bringing into the operating room a CNC machine with just that much accuracy. And uh, just as Dr. Lehman has been showing, literature is coming out to show that it is very, very successful. So again, when you take a look at this technology and look on the past accomplishments of it, something that is successful and something that has been achieved in a very, very good fashion. The last thing I'll comment on as well is the unit platform. Now, many of you may know Metacrea as a company that would build a rod for you and ship it to you from France. But when you take a look at Metacrea as a company in much closer depth and as a foundation, it is a technology company. This was a company that utilized artificial intelligence with machine learning and deep learning, and they processed thousands of patients preoperatively, surgeon uh, intervention, and postoperatively to develop predictive algorithms to figure out what happens to patients when we do surgery on them. I think as surgeons, we are notoriously bad at trying to figure out compensation. What happens to patients from a compensatory standpoint after we operate on them? And so this was designed to help us as surgeons to do that better. So as a technology, when you look at the recent past, something that has been very successful, right? So how does this guide where we go in the future? This talk and a lot of what we are going to be dealing with today is about robotic guidance, right? So I'll make a quick talk in this next section about robotic guidance. But as the title of my talk goes, all of this will be a part of this ecosystem of technologies and how it all fits together. So with robotic guidance, you can see here the robotics platform. So the Mazor X Stealth Edition, I think now more being commonly referred to as the Mazor robotic guidance system. You see the stealth camera, the workstation, and the robotic arm itself. The first benefit of it, as uh, Ron Lehman was talking about, is the predictability of planning. All of us as surgeons, when we show up in the operating room, have a plan in mind. And oftentimes we have that plan in our brains, we send it to our techs, we you know, write it on a sheet of paper, and when we're in the operating room, we try to accomplish that plan. With the software system, that plan can now be put down onto a concrete platform so that the robotic system will help you accomplish that plan. So this increases the predictability and lowers the amount of variability as you put in your implants. The next is the precision. Like I mentioned before, the robotics, um, the Mazor robotic guidance platform is a CNC machine. So those same robotic arms that build your cars, that build your phones, that build spaceships, right, that go into suborbit, is the same type of machine that is now available in the operating room. So the inherent accuracy of it is probably, I think people will say a millimeter or less. So as long as we pay attention to external factors, either surgeon error, patient error, uh, anesthesia, operating room error, external factors that can affect this accuracy, the precision of the system is exceptionally high. Last is the stealth navigation itself. So as a CNC machine, the arm itself doesn't have to show you where it's going. Just like the robotic arms in all the factories, they know where it's going based off of its internal proprioception. But by integrating in stealth navigation, which has been proven over and over the past decade, you as a surgeon can now see exactly what the arm is doing, which helps to inform the execution of your plan, the placement of your implants, and the accomplishment of the goals that are uh, being performed during the surgery.
So I will say, though, that the meat of this talk is going to be on the technologies, right? Particularly in this slide, uh, I like to show this background because you take a look at this slide and you see the Mizorex guidance system, right? It looks like a beautiful robotic arm. It's sitting in this very dim lighting. It's very, you know, mood lighting. It's very beautiful. And then you go outside and you take a look at other companies who have robotic arms as well, and they all look great. And so what is the fundamental difference between all of these competing systems? And for this, I typically bring up the analogy of... Uh, Fisker Karma, so some of you may remember Fisker Karma, beautiful car, electric car, Justin Bieber bought one, right? But then over the years, the battery started burning, the car started blowing up, the software would shut down. And so that is a car that looked beautiful, but the internal mechanics of it didn't support how good it looked. On the flip side, you take a look at Tesla, you know, arguably also a very beautiful car. So what makes it work so well? It's all of the internal mechanics, right? All of the technologies that underpin it that make it as good as it is. And so with the Mizorex guidance system, there are core technologies that support the system that make it work so well. These core technologies involve construct design, the registration, advanced segmentation of the system, and then the integration of technologies that Medtronic also has uh, available and under its purview. So with Construct Design, like I mentioned earlier, there is now a software system that allows you to put your plan into place. That means that it's not changing what you do for the surgery, but with all of those thoughts that used to be buried in your mind or buried in your memory or written down somewhere, you can put it down. And not only can you put it down, it's very specific in terms of the details. You can still decide the size of your screw, the diameter of your screw, the length, your entry point and trajectory, but now, as you build out that plan, it records it so that you can see the entirety of your plan in front of you. In this way, you're no longer building out just pedicle by pedicle by pedicle on the left side and the right side. You are building the entire construct. And the analogy that I like to make is it's sort of like building a house. I mean, sure, you can go to Home Depot, grab a bunch of wood, and go into a lot and start putting things together, and you will probably build a house or you can make your blueprint and know exactly what you want to do and make sure that the plan that you're building is appropriate for that situation. Not only can you do pedicle screws, but you can now do inner bodies, right? So in this software plan, say you want to do a T-lift, you put in that T-lift cage, you decide the height, the size, how much lordosis you get. Say with the simulated planning, you're not happy with it. Take it out, put in a lateral cage, now you can, again, decide size, length, lordosis. And this is an opportunity to practice this surgery instead of just committing to what you think might work in that patient and then do it in the surgery, then find out later when you can't do anything about it anymore. Likewise, when you plan your screws, you can show if your screws are lining up. Now, I, I can't speak for all of you. I've certainly been in situations where I'm putting in the screws, and then in that fourth or fifth screw, my mind starts to wander, and I'm thinking about dinner or is you know does my dog have enough food or you know is the resident doing something appropriate or what's ron lehman going to make fun of next you know in the next case but planar rod optimization you don't ever have to worry about it anymore because now your rods will line up every single time because the robot is helping you execute where your screws are going to go incision planning for the minimally invasive surgeons in the room that perk multiple level cases the software plan can tell you and help you predict where those skin incisions are. So if you're perking your screws, you can cluster your skin incisions to something that's cosmetic. For me personally, I, I tend to just make a paraspinal incision and put them all transfascial. But it shows the opportunities so that if you're doing a multi-level case, and like uh, Ron talked about, Greg Poulter is doing T10 to pelvis transfascial minimally invasively, this is the power of the platform. Or if you're an open deformity surgeon, there are software tools that allow you to put in all your pelvic parameters, right? Your lumbar lordosis, your PI, your thoracic kyphosis. And then now, similar to doing your inner body planning, you can do your osteotomy planning. Put in as many PCOs as you want. Put in the PSO and simulate the actual correction. And if it is enough or isn't enough, you now have the opportunity to do it beforehand before you show up in the operating room and just try. 
Now, next in the core technology is the registration itself. So this is the ability of the robotic system to understand all of the other things around it and to communicate with the other technologies in the room. The first is the 3D topographical mapping. Right, so the arm itself has three optical cameras in its forum that takes several pictures of the surgical field and the patient and recreates that into a finite element model to understand where the patient is in three-dimensional space. Now, the purpose of this uh, is to, one, patient safety, so the arm as it moves doesn't strike the patient and to optimize its movements, but as a core technology, you can understand how impressive it is that the arm can take pictures of the field and understand in that moment in time where your patient is. And the ability of that technology will only improve as the system improves in more of its applications. The next is O-arm registration, right? So if you have an O-arm, there's the option of bringing the O-arm and registering the robotic system with your intraoperative CT, so that way on that same day, you can do all of your planning, all of your scanning, and still accomplish all of your surgical goals by the registration of the robotic system with the O-arm. And then lastly is snapshot registration. So those of you who are navigation users are familiar that when you spin that O-arm, and you've registered your navigation, you can't bump anything, you can't move anything, because if you do, you're gonna have to bring out the arm again and then spin again, right? The snapshot registration is a way to update the robotic system with your navigation's platform. Like I mentioned earlier, the CNC machine, the Mizorex robot, is a completely independent arm that is as accurate into itself. The navigation array is meant for you to see what is going on. So if you bump the frame or if you feel that something has changed internally, you can update the mechanics by sending the arm to a known position, taking a snapshot, which is essentially a registration of the stealth to the uh, robotic arm, and then move on with your day without having to bring in the arm. I will say though that the most important type of registration core technology is the patient registration. Right, so I get my uh, CTs preoperatively, so they get, my patients get a supine CT. Then in the operating room, they are positioned lateral. They are positioned prone. Sometimes I'll open up and do all my osteotomies. Sometimes I'll put in inner body cages and change the way the spine has moved in that configuration. Despite that, when I take my two fluoro shots, the system can register that patient's three-dimensional volume to any change that has already occurred. And again, this is a mechanic internal core technology that makes the Mazor system so successful at what it does and something that you will never see just by looking on the outer shell of the guidance system. With this, this dovetails into the segmentation. Right? When you look on the left side of the screen, you can see an AP and lateral. This is the system automatically detecting where every single vertebral body is. And again, it doesn't detect this in two-dimensional space it sees this as a three-dimensional volume of bone. And in that three-dimensional volume, you can see that it understands superior end plate, inferior end plate, pedicle, foramen. And so right now, the Mazorix robot is putting in pedicle screws. But you can see that if this is a core technology that underpins what you're using, it will be a foundation as the robotic system moves on and becomes more advanced into other applications in the future. The next uh, core would be the integration of all of the other possibilities and uh, technologies that Medtronic has. The first, of course, is the Midas Rex drill. So one of the earlier concerns was that when using the robotics platform, you put down the drill, what if the drill skives off a slanted surface? Meaning it bounces off, and then now you have a several degree difference, which is compounded when you put in a screw. Uh, I don't know about you, the Midas Rex drill spinning at 75,000 RPMs to me is an engineering marvel. The fact that Medtronic has been able to integrate this technology into the platform shows that this system has the ability to take advantage of all of the other, uh, gosh, all of the other offerings that Medtronic has to make the system better. With technology integration, this now also integrates the wide array of toolkits that Stealth Navigation has. So not only can you put in your pedicle screws and see where those pedicle screws are going, with the integration of other, uh, other technologies with Medtronic, you can now work in the inner body space. You can navigate all your tools. You can place your interbody with the assistance of the Mazor at the center 
of this ecosystem. The last thing I'll comment on, of course, is the uh, UNID hub. And as I mentioned before, UNID is a technology, right? ASI is Adaptive Spine Intelligence, which is the core technologies of the artificial intelligence that have utilized machine learning and deep learning to help you predict all of the reciprocal changes that happen when you operate on patients. And not only that, it allows you to try out certain plans and see what those reciprocal changes are to see if those are appropriate uh, treatments for that patient. And so in this way, by incorporating this into the robotic system, by having your patient-specific rod sent out as lined up by your Mazor plan, it uh, adds to the entire benefit of the unit system. So as shown here, it's a virtuous cycle. So as opposed to a vicious cycle where things just get worse and worse and worse, uh, gosh, like my child when he's hungry and, and just doesn't want to eat what I'm putting in front of him, a virtuous cycle is something that just gets better with every single step. So as you put in your x-rays, as other surgeons put in their x-rays, these will continue to get better, and this is an advantage that you can continue to uh, harness and leverage for your patients. So where does this all come to? The idea then is that this is this ecosystem of technologies, right? And I'd like to thank, uh, gosh, Kirsten and Steph for letting me squeeze in this updated PowerPoint because I was able to squeeze in this uh, screenshot. This is a tweet that I sent out yesterday, right? Robotic plans, corrective simulation, patient-specific rods with machine learning and reciprocal change. We are so close to personalized medicine in spine surgery. When instrumenting for reconstruction, AI helps you drive to work. Let's put it to use here, too. And what do I mean by that? Now, instead of just a grab bag of technology, Right? It's like, oh, let's use this company. Let's uh, bring in the intraoperative CT one day. And oh, let's use the robotic arm the next day. Or, you know what, this seems like a really hard case. Uh, let's contact my engineer and have them print out a rod. Or, you know, this is a case, uh, you know, let's just use navigation. The idea is that all of these technologies now are in this comprehensive ecosystem to allow you to go from point A to point B to point C to help you execute your goals in accomplishing uh, your surgeries for your patients. So for example, at the start of this, talk to your biomedical engineer deciding on what plan you want to do. Run through several plans to make sure that it is the appropriate plan for that patient and for that correction. Over time, the unit platform will integrate patient reported outcomes, right? So patient reported outcomes at the end of the day, how patients do is the currency of what we're doing to make sure that we're successful. And this can be integrated into this system. Once you have that plan, show up in the operating room, do your navigated and robotic workflows, put in your patient-specific rod, which is a representative of your plan, and then harness all of the great uh, Medtronic implants that are available to you, whether you want to do an open Solera case, Solera Voyager with minimally invasive approaches, say you're going up in the cervical spine with Infinity, these are excellent implants, as all of you already know. Once the case is done, take your x-rays, send it to the hub, and now you have longitudinal follow-up in front of you. Not only do those x-rays get put back into the unit system to make it better, you now, have a, you now have a place to reflect on how successful you were. How successful was the plan? How successful were you as a surgeon? And as this patient gets x-rays, they will continue to be added to the system. And as you can see here, it all makes sense, right? This is not just a company where there's just a whole bunch of good stuff where you just kind of pick what you want that day, the idea is that we are putting this all together to allow you this uh, solutions, entirety of solutions for the execution of patient care and, and to get better outcomes. I think that's it. So again, uh, as I wrote in my title slide, an introduction to robotics, but really how robotic guidance fits into this ecosystem of technologies. Uh, thanks for listening 